So these Pokemon are boosted speed, and you hate to see that. Welcome to the Bower Battle Breakdown, where we learn and grow together. I feel really good about this lead choice into my opponent's lead choice. However, it doesn't mean I like my opponent's lead. This is super annoying. Clefairy is very difficult to deal with, probably the most challenging for me personally out of the redirectors that are available. I need, I want to get rid of it as soon as possible, but I also can't let Calyrex just do whatever it wants. So you'll see that I choose to fake out the Clefairy and that I will use this turn to Eerie Impulse the Calyrex. My hope is that I can mitigate it as much as possible in order to buy me enough time to dispose of the Clefairy, so that way I could properly attack the Calyrex. This Astral Barrage is going to come through. The thing to make note of here is that it does not do 50% to Tapu Koko. We know it can at least take one more of these. I continue to direct my attacks to Calyrex Shadow, but I'm pretty confident that Clefairy will simply follow me, and that is perfectly okay. I gotta get rid of both of them, so damage is damage, and I'm okay with it. The second Astral Barrage, as I suspected, isn't going to bring Tapu Koko down. The Throat Chop is going to do a mighty none damage to Clefairy. Now, Calyrex is minus two, but I can't let it start to build up that Snowball. So you're going to see, I'm going to swap out for Porygon 2, very defensive switch. Can't really do a whole ton while Clefairy is there, but you'll notice my opponent also swaps out their Calyrex. So this is a very, we both decided we had enough at the same time. And thankfully Clefairy protects, so my Throat Chop into the Groudon isn't going to do a ton of damage, but it will do something. At this point, I am defensively in a decent position, but I want to be able to start applying pressure. I'm going to attempt to Parting Shot off of the Groudon and see if I can get that to stick. Unfortunately, Porygon is not really doing much right here. I just go ahead and call a foul play. Clefairy gets paralyzed, presumably going for a follow me. Precipice Blades connects. Incineroar is able to weather that pretty well thanks to its berry, and it will get the parting shot into the Groudon as intended in order to bring Palkia in. Now, with the parting shot into the Groudon, my Palkia is in a pretty good position right now. And what you're going to see here in a moment is I decide that I'm going to Dynamax and start going for those max Quake boosts as much as humanly possible because all of my opponent's threats on this team are special. The only physical threat is Groudon, who is about to take another minus one. I'm going to swap in this in Cineroar. So the Groudon goes to minus two. And then Palkia is going to Dynamax, and my goal here is to attempt to get as many Max Quake boosts as possible. As I said, that special defense is going to be very handy for the rest of this. I don't know what Clefairy was going for. If it was going for Follow Me, that wouldn't matter because Clefairy is indeed the Pokemon that I was targeting. Get rid of that nuisance. And Groudon is going to try and recoup some of that lost stat with Bulk Up and Leftovers. Now that my opponent gets their Charizard in play, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen next. The Sun is up, and the Dynamax has not been used. G-Max Charizard is indeed coming. I feel like my Palkia is in a pretty good spot. However, my Incineroar has used its Shuckaberry, and even though the Groudon has been debuffed some, it's a pretty good chance to go ahead and get him out of there. But my opponent thinks the same thing and decides to swap for Calyrex Shadow to my Porygon. I feel like this is a really good trade. Porygon 2 has a really good matchup into Calyrex Shadow. Unfortunately, the Charizard is still going to get to attack it, so this isn't going to feel good. He opts for the Airstream instead of the Wildfire, bringing my Porygon down to almost KO'd. It has 6 health left, so it is going to get to survive. Now, Porygon traced the solar power, but I set the weather back to rain, so I'm not going to lose the Porygon to that chip. Now, something I'm going to talk about after the game is over is I guessed on this turn that my opponent would want to max guard with their Charizard, and that 
just is not very reasonable. Again, I'll talk about that later. I figure my Porygon 2 is a sitting duck, literally. So I'm going to go ahead and cast Trick Room. In the unlikely event that they let it survive, I'll get that Trick Room up and I'll be in a much better position. My opponent goes for the Wildfire into the Palkia, hoping to pick up the Porygon 2 with the chip. I use a Max Quake because I want to continue boosting my special defense. And again, that's over on the Groudon slot instead of the Charizard because I thought it might guard. I lose Porygon and we have a handful of effects that happen. Now that my Porygon 2 has been defeated, we're back to Incineroar. But now, Trick Room is up, so my Pokemon are at a significantly better position than against the Charizard before. I decide that I'm going to Spatial Rend the Charizard and that I'm going to Flare Blitz the Groudon. I was expecting it to swap to Calyrex Shadow, which was silly. Again, I'll talk about that <laughs> in the later portion of this video. Groudon barely survives the Flare Blitz. Now, Precipice Blades is going to go before Palkia anyway, but I think it would have made a lot more sense if I had just doubled the Groudon. Unfortunately, I did not do that. So the end of turn abilities are going to kick in. And I'm left with Tapu Koko Palkia against Groudon and Charizard. Charizard's G-Max ends, but very notably, my opponent has a slower Pokemon that has a spread move when I have two Pokemon that are almost toast. So in the span of about two turns, this whole game turns on its head, and unfortunately, I end up losing very, very quickly. Now, that game appeared to have some pretty good back and forth, and then it just went super duper sideways in the last two turns, and it looks like I lost just immediately. I want to talk about a couple of decisions that I made during that game that were perhaps not the best, and then I want to talk about a central theme that has woven its way throughout this game. First, the Clefairy at the beginning. Whenever I Dynamaxed my Palkia in order to take care of this Clefairy with a Max Quake, it was probably not the best use of my first turn of Dynamax. Granted, the special defense boost is always nice, but they got a lot more use out of their Dynamax than I did. Secondly, there was the turn where my Porygon was about to get toasted and I decided, hey, I can go ahead and Trick Room in order to turn the tides. That I think was still perhaps the correct call, but knowing that I was going to do that, I should have given more consideration to the Groudon because Trick Room gives me a better matchup against Charizard and against Calyrex Shadow, but the Groudon then started just beating me up because I didn't deal with it. The second set of things that I want to talk about involve some of the predictions that I made. On Charizard's second turn of Dynamax, I figured they're going to max guard. I'm going to attack the partner, which is incredibly dumb for two reasons. First of all, G-Max Charizard pretty much wants to attack all the time, and they also had not set G-Max Wildfire at that point, and that is the number one thing that Charizard players want to do with their G-Max. And secondly, they had a incredible speed advantage. Charizard had already done an Airstream. It was guaranteed to go super fast. So why would my opponent guard with the Charizard? And on the flip side, the following turn, when Porygon had set up the Trick Room and now Charizard was moving last and in red health, that would have been a much better opportunity to Dynamax. And I figured, oh, okay, I'll, I'll split my attacks just in case. No, that Charizard's going to guard, and as I just described, Groudon is the threat. During that turn, I actually should have just doubled the Groudon. In that same turn, I also said, hey, they're probably going to swap for Calyrex. Why would my opponent want to put Calyrex in front of Incineroar during Trick Room? It makes no sense. I kept trying to overread the situation, but it comes down to this one central idea. Your opponent doesn't have to do anything clever when they are in a dominant position. If you think they're going to do some switch or some move, you have to ask yourself, what do they get out of it? And that's clearly not something that I was doing in this game. That concludes this week's Bower Battle Breakdown. Thank you so much for joining me. Before you go, I'd like to show you a little teaser for what next week's Bower Battle Breakdown is going to look like. 
I think you should do Whimsicott and Charizard, Calyrex, and Clefairy. 